Hi, my name is Thomas Biskup and I live in the town of Witten in Germany. I'm the creator of the roguelike game Adam and also the lead developer of the upcoming sequel Ultimate Adam. Adam probably is uh, the greatest personal work achievement uh, of my life and it has been responsible for so many crazy and incredible stories. Adam is a pioneer in the roguelike gaming genre. It has been recognized as one of the five foundational games of the genre. It always uh, was famous for its deep focus on um, storytelling, on role playing, on an extensive world with lots of background. Last year, uh, therefore, Adam also was recognized as one of the top 50 role playing games on computer of all times. And um, we are also proud that Adam was the most downloaded game on the internet in 1996. The idea for modernizing Adam probably was born around 2002-2003, I think, um, because although Adam is incredibly detailed, it also has uh, lots of technical limitations because it was created during a time when I was a very experienced programmer and the code in large parts is, let's put it, challenging. And so, so many awesome things we would love to add and have been requested by the community, it's simply are impossible on the code. And that's why I thought about developing a new version of Adam. It's meant to modernize the game in every respect, from a much better UI to a much more flexible gameplay, better graphics, everything. Adam's theme actually is a very classical uh, topic known from literature, um, the fight between order and chaos, uh, or the fate of the world. And um, you have the forces of chaos invading the world of Ancadia, its lord and the dracon uh, is the absolute master of chaos and he's trying to corrupt the whole world. And you as a hero try to make sense of all that and uh, have to decide to, whether you want to um, fight against chaos or even side with it, or even maybe push under from his throne, and Ultimate Aeon will take place after the hero seems to have defeated Ender Dracon. It's a new era and uh, many things have changed in the um, wake of the defeat. And to find out what's going on and what your role be, will be in that, that's the story of Ultimate Aeon. On one hand, the community still is very much alive and it's just great and they keep asking for new stuff, which is flattering. On the other hand, I had this idea for a new gaming engine, a new internal architecture that would allow us to do things that I think in this depth never before have been seen in games. A um, crazy amount of detail for the interaction with the world and with items and all that. And I think it's really time by now that uh, Roguelike tries to enter mainstream and not just be confined to a niche. Craziest thing that happened to me. Oh dear. Probably the craziest thing is that I never actually completed my own game without cheating. I just can't win it. We started in the third quarter of 2019. By that point, we already had been working on the underlying game engine for the uh, basic infrastructure for more than a year. One of the central cornerstones of development for Aiden and also for Ultimate Aiden always was the close integration of the feedback of the community. We always receive so many awesome ideas and inspiration for items, skills, monsters, quests, traps, whatever from the community that we really like to work very closely with it and integrate their ideas into the game. Ultimate Adam has a lot of cool features, so it's kind of hard to pick, but if I have to pick, I would say that first thing is grafting. Um, you can amputate body parts of monsters, graft them to your body, and thus gain special abilities from monsters. Like if you um, attach a dragon head to your body, you can start to breath fire. If you attach a warm tail to your body, you can lay egg. No, don't, let's not get into that. So, second thing is what we call animancy. That's a capability to animate uh, dead things like all items, the walls, the doors, you can buy them with life and they start moving around like monsters, so that allows for very cool tactics. Third thing probably is um, the capability to exchange your mind uh, and the body with other monsters, so you basically can move into any monster and, and play as that monster, that's also pretty cool. You have this notion of everything exists in the game, so you really can either drink a potion or coat a door with it. If it's a potion of teleportation and the monster tries to open the door, it touches the teleportation liquid and gets moved elsewhere, for example. 
first and foremost, it's not just a rehash of the old game. It's a complete new game with a new storyline, a new um, game system, and also uh, new goals and targets in the game. So the user interface has been completely revamped, doing away with the need for hundreds, literally hundreds of keys in Adam. And you basically can play the game with like, let's say, seven or eight keys or completely by mouse or gamepad, um, whatever you want. And it's rather easy to use. Nonetheless, it has the depth of the old engine. It also offers the keyboard shortcut, shortcuts um, people love. Finally, it's probably a game with a much deeper way of playing it because we have, for example, this extensive skill system, which has like over a thousand skills. And although at first glance we have less classes than you have in Adam, you can do a lot more with them because they are much more customizable and offer much more venues of um, adapting them to your style of gameplay. It's a very good question. I've given really a lot of thought also together with the team because um, the biggest criticism, I think rightfully so, against Adam is that it's a very, very hard to play game due to the many key bindings, over 100 commands you need to know and all that stuff. And you have to really rethink the user interface and um, think about different means of input. Classic roguelike games all are pretty hard to get into because they are so complex and have so much depth. And trying to find the balance between depth and usability is an extremely interesting challenge and we are working on it every day. And I think it could be very, very interesting for uh, more mainstream gamers to be um, carefully exposed to the challenges and depths of roguelike games while being able to play them in a more leisurely and casual style without having to memorize lexicons of um, arcane commands. So my answer is yes, I think it's possible to present very traditional gameplay in a very modern dressing. We'll see, we'll see, but I'm very positive about it.